So as we talk about mitosis, we need to understand that in, in actuality, there is a cell cycle and mitosis ac actually only makes up a small portion of that cell cycle. So you see here the entire cell cycle and all of this makes up what we call interphase. Okay. The only part that is actually mitosis is this little piece represented here. So mitosis is cell division, and we can think of lots of reasons that a cell might need to divide. So as an organism grows, um, as if damage occurs and we need repair, um, as cells become older, we need to replace those. So there's several reasons for cell division. And let's start by going through the process of interphase. So interphase is broken up into three separate components, G1, S, and G2. In G1, that's sort of the first growth or the first gap phase. And it doesn't mean that nothing is happening then. Um, actually, there are lots of things happening. For example, um, the individual building blocks that are necessary in the next phase are being accumulated and built up, as well as the cell is producing ATP energy that's going to be needed later on in the process. So after the first gap phase, we have S phase, which stands for DNA synthesis. So in this important phase, the entire genome or all of the DNA is copied so that now there are two copies of everything in this cell. And that's in preparation because as this cell begins to divide, it needs to have two copies of every single um, strand of DNA or every single chromosome so that each cell is going to get sufficiently one full copy of chromosomes. Now as we move on to the next phase, G2 or gap 2 or growth phase 2, um, there are going to be some things that the cell has to have in preparation for entering into mitosis. So for example, um, there's going to need to be a, a good amount of cytoskeleton around, as we'll see that's necessary in mitosis. Um, there's also going to have to be not just a duplication of all the DNA, which occurred in S phase, but also of the cytoplasm and all of the organelles in the cytoplasm before the cell actually enters the mitotic phase. Now we're going to spend some time in a minute talking about what actually goes on during uh, mitosis where one cell divides into two. But first I want us to spend a little time, before I move on though, I want to make sure you, I point something out to you. This portion mitosis is cell division. The DNA gets duplicated well before the cell enters into mitosis. And in fact, there's an error check there to make sure that everything has been copied before the cell can enter into cell division. Now we're going to be talking a lot about chromosomes as we go through the cell division process. I want to make sure we understand some of the anatomy of a chromosome and some of the terminology. So first of all, what we see here is actually a duplicated chromosome. So this chromosome has already gone through S phase because everything has been copied. In other words, a single chromosome, okay, would just have one arm like this. This would be an unduplicated chromosome. So we can actually divide this chromosome right down the middle and say, well, these are two sisters. Okay, and they are exactly copies of one another. So this sister and this sister are identical because during the S phase process, the entire strand or all of the DNA nucleotides were copied and that's why we have two sister chromatids. Now this middle region where it looks like sort of the belt okay, of the chromosome is called the centromere. This is where the spindle fibers or the cytoskeleton that actually manipulates and moves the chromosomes around, this is where the spindles will actually attach to the chromosome. Now something else that I want us to talk about is something called homologous pairs. So this is one chromosome shown here. OK. 
Okay, so imagine if these were exactly the same size, okay? And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this chromosome be red, okay? And this one blue. Let's say this is a pair of chromosome 1. Okay, so these are the same chromosome. They have the same um, genes on them. They may not be the same form of the gene, but they have the same genes. This would be, okay, let's say the maternal chromosome. And this other one would be the paternal chromosome. The pair of these together is called a homologous pair, okay, because they are the same chromosome. Now, if you had a chromosome 1 and a chromosome 5, they wouldn't be homologous pairs because they don't have the same genes on those chromosomes. Homologous pair can either be the duplicated chromosomes like we see here, or we can have an unduplicated um, pair of chromosomes, either way. Now we're going to move on and talk a little bit about mitosis. Now mitosis is divided up into phases, okay, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase or telophase. So I remember this with PMAT, P-M-A-T, and just remember that prometaphase is in there in between prophase and metaphase. Now remember, this is that small piece of the pie in the cell cycle where the actual cell division begins. And what's the goal of mitosis? It's because this cell that's about to divide has duplicated, right? It's got double the DNA, it's got double the cytoplasm, it's got double the organelles. So we're just separating, or the cell is just separating into two identical daughter cells. So genetically they will be identical because we just had a complete copy made of all the chromosomes in the cell. Now there's some things that we should know about the phases. So for example, in prophase, what do we expect to happen? Well, the DNA, the form of DNA, which when a cell is not in cell division, exists as chromatin. So it's not as quite as tightly packaged as it would be in a chromosome. When the cell enters into cell division, then the DNA becomes packaged in its tightest form as a chromosome. So we begin to see visible chromosomes as they as they as the DNA condenses. We also begin to see the spindle fiber. So this is the this apparatus made up of microtubules, so part of the cytoskeleton in the cell. And these are going to be responsible for attaching to and moving manipulating the chromosomes so that everything arrives where it should, right? To the correct daughter cell. We're going to see the nuclear envelope begin to disappear, go away, as well as the nucleolus. So as we move on to prometaphase, this process just continues. Remember the cell, this is a continuous process for the cell. We're just marking as certain things happen, we're saying we call this this portion of mitosis. So in prometaphase, we see that the spindle is attaching to those kinetochore, kinetochore, kinetochore proteins of the centromere. So that's sort of that waste looking area where the belt might be in the chromosome. Okay, um, the chromosomes will continue to condense even further. For metaphase, what we recognize, and you can see from this image here, the chromosomes line up in the middle or the equator of the cell. So they line up single file. And you see that the spindle fibers, right, are attaching to the centromeres of the chromosomes. Now at this point, the sister chromatids are still attached, right? We, we have the duplicated chromosomes intact, lined up in the equator of the cell. In anaphase, what you'll notice is the sister chromatids have separated, okay, they're no longer attached and now they are sister chromosomes. So when they're attached together, each arm is called a sister chromatid. Once they're separate, now they are sister chromosomes. Okay, now the spindle fibers are actually um, moving those sister chromosomes to opposite poles or opposite ends of the cell. In telophase, we see that the chromosomes actually arrive 
at the opposite ends, and essentially the opposite of prophase and prometaphase begin to occur. So we see that the nuclear envelope begins to reform, the spindle begins to break down, and ultimately that what we've been tracking is the movement of the chromosomes, right? What's what's going on in the nucleus. But ultimately, for cell division to be complete, we have to end with cytokinesis or the division of the cytoplasm into the two distinct cells. And it happens differently for plant or animal cells. So the one pictured here is like an animal cell where it just begins to pinch in, okay, which is called a cleavage furrow because animal cells don't have a cell wall, a rigid cell wall. In a plant cell, there will be a new cell plate that will be built up. Um, that will eventually become the cell wall. So little vesicles will carry in components that make up that new cell wall that will begin to, to cause um, a new cell wall to be built up between the two sister cells.